Stealth might be the single mechanic we know almost nothing about. Most people know it exists, but not many people know how far it can bend the game's rules. You probably tried to be sneaky in this game before and embarrassed yourself by crouching up to an enemy just for your wooden box to move and the whole squad to pull up. It feels unreliable. And to some degree, it is. But for the most part, there's very little you cannot do if you know the ins and outs of stealth. Let's talk about the basics first. To be sneaky, you need to mute your footsteps and make yourself harder to see. One way to achieve both is by crouching, as it makes you silent and less visible. And by doing it in tall grass, you can even become virtually fully invisible. What's nice is that sprinting while crouching does not make any noise either, so there really is no reason to not sprint crouch. What's not nice is that crouch rolling does make a sound. This is unfortunate. Here's a list of all of the items that make your footsteps silent, that make you harder to see, and lastly, the tools to do both at once. The way detection works is pretty simple. He says before explaining it for four minutes. <laughs> Almost every action in the game creates a sound, and depending on what it is, the sound waves are bigger or smaller. Equally, every enemy has a detection radius, which depends on the size of their ears and whether or not they can fly with them. If the sound and detection radius touch, the enemy will turn to investigate the source by walking up to it. This puts them into an alert state, and after a bit of waiting, the enemy will return to their original position if they don't find you, unless you keep alerting them. There's a big difference between alert and aggro. For example, if you are too far away or behind a wall when they turn to face the sound, they will simply be alert but unaware of your presence. There's this hilarious middle ground where they are aware but not aggro, so they kind of just enter staring contests with you before eventually giving up. I can't see shit. In order to be detected, you need to be within a roughly 60 degree cone that extends in front of an enemy and close enough to be visible. Crouching helps, and moving during the night makes it even harder for an enemy to see you. Contrary to what some of you might have thought, armor does not make any noise when moving. Not even heavy stone armor, which is breaking my immersion, but it's probably for the best. Using that knowledge, combined with the fact that items create a sound when hitting an object, you can sneak through even the most crowded places without anyone ever noticing you. Just like in real life. But what makes a sound and what doesn't? Since this is all pretty dry knowledge, how about I keep it short? Using throwable items. Throwable items when they hit something. Pots, but only if they leave behind an effect. Using any form of weapon. Arrows landing, but only very close. The majority of spells. Healing flasks and spells. Buff spells. Night sorcery. Mists. Helping me reach 100k. Using non-throwable items. Throwing normal pots. Prattling pates for some reason. And torrent if your footsteps are muted. Basically, the rule of thumb is, if the item has an outside effect, such as a knife being thrown or an arrow being shot, it makes a sound on both the place of use and the spot it will land on. The only exception, once again, is prattling pates, which <laughs> is... I don't, I, I don't know. Spells are really well done in this context. Madness incantations can alert enemies from far away, while mists and night sorceries make no sound. Very realistic. The louder the spell, the further it will alert enemies. It wouldn't be a FromSoft game if there wasn't some form of catch though. And that catch is scripted triggers. Bosses are the first thing that come to mind, even though I will show you at the end just how badly they can be broken with this. But they are also on some enemies, such as the giant and the storm gate. In this case, he was forced to jump down by me touching the trigger zone, but because I was behind him already, and had muted footsteps, he was not even alert after landing. In other cases, you sadly cannot prevent being noticed, even when using Mimic's Veil, which is basically the strongest form of invisibility and silence. But you can make most enemies in the game look like a group of YouTubers looking for pennies by using all of this knowledge combined. Because of that, stealth is extremely good for isolated enemies, but struggles with groups. That is why you can use items to single out enemies one at a time and set your trap. One way to reset an enemy's aggro is running away far enough and hiding to reset them to an alert state, but you can also use the Darkness Incantation, which is an absolute meme. This spell resets the aggro and blinds them for 7 seconds, allowing most enemies to be backstabbed over and over and over again. But let's get to what everyone has been waiting for. Bosses. Many of the open world bosses and dungeon bosses struggle to deal with stealth, but this little guy right here might just be the saddest case. There's also stealth damage. We end up dealing a good bit of extra damage and extra poise damage on a hit if the enemy is unaware of you. Some of the arena bosses run into pretty severe issues as well. This is where things get ridiculous. As long as the arena is big enough and the enemy far enough away, you can sneak into the arena and avoid the boss's aggro. It works on one of the Crucible Knight duo bosses, allowing you to fight a one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one instead. It works on the double Crystallians, on Morgan and Godfrey, kind of at least. 
It lets you sleep both of the god skins very easily and probably a bunch of other bosses that are yet to be discovered. And all you really need to do any of this is Kukri's and the Assassin's Gambit Ashafor, which you usually get by doing the first part of the Volcano Mana questline, but with a little trick you can get it much easier. All you have to do is talk things out with Banal, get to the mana either through Raya's quest or by dying to the Iron Maiden and Raya Lucario, and then starting the questline. If you give his bell bearing to the Twin Maiden Husks after starting the questline, you can buy Assassin's Gambit before fighting any boss or any PC. And cookeries can be bought for cheap at the first merchant you find in Weeping Peninsula. There you go, stealth starting kit. None of the other tools are needed at that point, but if you want to go the route of Misericord and full backstab damage build, then you do you. Just make sure no one sees it. Get it? Because that's, that's the whole point. No, but seriously, that's embarrassing.